Vectors are very geometric concepts. So every time I want to come up with a algebraic thing, the dot product or the cross product and so on, I want to know what does it mean geometrically? So let's take two vectors. Uh, one can be the vector A and the other can be the vector B. Now, one of the things that we know from the previous video is that if I look at the cross product between A and B, this cross product is going to be orthogonal to both the vector A and the vector B. So in other words, if I was to like try to draw this, it, it's a little bit hard to, to visualize. Maybe it would be something like this. Maybe my, my vector A cross B would be up there. And I'm imagining that I'm having a, a perpendicular down onto that vector. And I imagine I'm having a perpendicular down onto that vector. Now, that's all lovely, but that doesn't tell me anything about the length of this vector A cross B. It tells me its orientation. It tells me it's orthogonal to the vectors A and B. But but what does the length of the vector A cross B mean? Well, one thing that we can do with the original vectors A and B is, is that I can put them together and I can form a parallelogram. So in other words, if I've got the one vector B, I can, I can copy and paste it. Remember, I can move a vector around if I don't change its length or its orientation. And likewise with the vector of A. So, so if I have any A and any B, what it defines is a parallelogram. So then we can ask the question, what is the area of the parallelogram? So the key property here is that if I take the length of the A cross B vector, in other words, I've got this vector and I take the square root or the sum of the squares of its components, that's what the length of the vector is. The length of this vector is equal to the area of that parallelogram. In other words, the area of the parallelogram that is formed by the A and the B. Let's see if we can take this a little bit further. One thing that I could do with the cross product is that the cross product A cross B, this is a vector. It is, it is some other vector. The cross product takes two vectors and spits out a third vector. So since it's a vector, I could take, say, the dot product of that with some other vector. So I could take what I'm going to refer to as the triple product, where I take the cross product of two vectors, that gives me another vector, and I take the dot product of that vector with a third vector C. This is referred to as the triple product. And note that the order here is very important. Uh, it's important to us that we take the cross product first, that gives me another vector, and then I've got two vectors and I can take their dot product. So the question is, what does this thing mean? So you know how we just define a parallelogram? We can also define something called a parallel pipette. A parallel pipette is going to look like this. I'm going to have one vector and I'm going to call it A. I'm going to have a second vector and I'm going to call it B. And I'm going to try to draw this with a little bit of perspective. I'm going to have a third vector and I'm going to call it C. Now, what we just found out from the, from the interpretation of the cross product is that if I take the cross product of A and B, then, then this parallelogram, I'm going to form it right here, that parallelogram is going to have the area given by the cross product. I can do the same trick with the C vector. I can move it around. I can put it to there, or I could put it to there, or I could put it to there. And, and, and generally, I can sort of fill in here, and I get what we're going to refer to as a parallel pipette. And then, as you might guess, the volume is going to be precisely equal, the volume of this parallel pipette, to the triple product to A cross B dotted with C. So the takeaway here is that if I give you two vectors, the two vectors can be thought of as defining a parallelogram, and the area of that parallelogram is given by the cross product. If I give you three vectors, those three vectors are going to define a parallel pipette, 
And the volume of that parallel pipette is given by the triple product.